Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we're taking a train to Venice, Italy, uh, taking a little day trip. We'll give you all the tips and tricks of best things to see, best restaurants to go to, and we'll take you along for some of the issues that we ran into along the way. Let's check it out. So a little bit about our trip today. So we've got Anna's brother and his wife and her mom visiting us and we booked the tickets for us well ahead of time to go to Venice. What I didn't realize is that there are two stations with the name Venice or Venenzi in the name. And I booked the one with the station before the station that we needed to go to. Luckily, I talked to the ticket manager and the two tickets are the same price. You can go to the same place, it's no big deal. But I was having a heart attack for probably a good 30 minutes before our train trip got out of the station. So yeah, we are about an hour and a half away from Venice. Everything's been figured out so far, so we'll see you when we get there. Once we got to Venice, it was smooth sailing. We met up with our guide to take us around the city and we were on our way. So once you're out of the train station, you're in the heart of Venice. Um, it's literally right there. If you've never been here before, I would highly recommend downloading your maps ahead of time. It's incredibly easy to get lost in this city. The streets are windy, they're small, uh, there's a lot of people around. I think it's, it's very easy to get lost here. Venice. The only way to get around in Venice is either walk or by boat, which can be kind of expensive if you don't know what you're doing. We've always opted to walk around just because for us it's easier. On the opposite side of the island is Piazza San Marco the center of Venice's political, religious, and social life for centuries. From here, we were surrounded by really impressive buildings, such as the Basilica di San Marco. While it's a bit of a walk from the train station, just keep following the signs until you get there, as this is something you cannot miss while you're here. From the piazza, it's really easy to get yourself a gondola ride, however, it will cost you. The price when we went was about 80 euros per ride, which is insane. There are places around here where you can also enjoy a meal if you're interested as well. For a light snack, we opted to go to our favorite place in Venice instead, Seppa. Seppa has some of the most delicious seafood and is quick too, but you'll be hard pressed to find a seat in here as it's usually standing room only. The best part about this place is the Prosecco. Oh my God. I would come back here just again, just for the Prosecco. I dream of it all the time. Probably the best we've had in our entire life. After our snack, we decided it was time for lunch. So we sought out the nearest thing to us, pizza. At Osteria al Polso Rovoso, we enjoyed authentic Italian pizza, select spritzes, which is different and more bitter than your traditional Aperol spritzes, and good vibes with the family.
That is, until we realized what time it was and we had to literally run to our train. We realized we had about 25 minutes until the train left and it was a 20 minute walk. We were hauling through the crowds and even running. The train will not wait for anybody, as we discovered. We got on with about five seconds to spare. Thankfully, we made it back to Florence on time. The next day, while we were exhausted from our Venice trip, we decided we needed to head back to the train station to do our next day trip. Okay, we're rolling, so. Do I look crazy? Yes, we're rolling right now. Do I look crazy? No. Okay, ready? Welcome to Milan. Oh, people. Oh, people. Oh, my God. <laughs> you didn't tell me anyone hey, else walk. Okay, maybe walk forward. <laughs> we're live. Okay, let's try that again. Welcome to Milan. Milan is a global fashion capital known for its high-end designer boutiques, fashion events, and is the headquarters for Prada, Gucci, and Versace. It also boasts some really great architecture, which we had the pleasure of touring a little bit of. This is the house that was in the movie, The House of Gucci with Lady Gaga, the famous Via Necci Campagliaro. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of this, so please forgive me, but it has now been turned into a museum for everybody to enjoy. From here, we started our way towards the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele, also known as Milan's drawing room. It houses some of the most luxurious boutiques in Milan. We were super impressed. Finally, for our sightseeing tour, we walked to Duomo di Milano. It's a big church. It's said that if you rub the bronze doors, you'll have good luck. So of course you know we had to do it. For the rest of our time in Milan, we walked around with a local to take us on a shopping tour. We had to, I mean, we're, we're in Milan.
The one thing I will say about our time here is that I felt massively underdressed. If you plan on coming here and you want to blend in and not stick out like we did, try to at least wear something fashionable, not just a t-shirt and pants like me. Look, if you liked following along on our day trips, we'd really appreciate a like, or if you want to see more, click the subscribe button. Next week, we'll be in Verona, which was probably our favorite day trip out of all of them. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.